All right, today's the day I'm out in the woods with the Bushcraft Essentials Bush Box XL. I have it both in stainless steel and in titanium. So we're going to be running two simultaneous demonstrations, one with wood and the other one with wood pellets. Now, I recommend that if you have more interest in, in my full review of the two of these stoves, then I will link at the end of this video the comprehensive review. And of course, I'll put it in the video description underneath the link to that video as well, because today we're just focusing on the performance. All right, let's get set up at the fire pit. All right, once again, set up in the fire pit out here in my spot that I like to use in the woods. And you can get an idea of just how big these stoves are. They're, you know, I've got the two of them set up side by side, hopefully with enough shelter from the wind. I, I think, I suspect I do. I did not need to use the stabilizing plate, the floor plate for that stove. I just thought it would be nice to show it while it's in action. So I have the stainless steel one on my right. The stainless steel one is loaded with just over one cup of wood pellets so you get an idea just how many wood pellets that amounts to. I'm going to get that lit first because wood pellets do take a little longer to get going. And all right, pour a little bit of alcohol, not much, half an ounce maybe. And then I'll drop a piece of lip birch bark on top of that. Yep, there they go. All right, so while that's slowly getting lit, I have a couple of bundles of sticks and right inside of the titanium one here on my left, I have some birch bark that I picked up off of the ground, small piece extra. And I'll get that birch bark lit and I'll slowly put in some small sticks progressing up to my uh, larger. Try to get out of the wind here. I've said it before, there's birch bark and there's birch bark, and I thought this was the better stuff. Well, what can I do here? Peel off some of the old stuff and use the inner. That'll work much better. Like that. Sometimes the odor birch bark is a little reluctant to get going, but once, once it does, it does. All right, some small sticks. Just a little bundle in through the window. Another little bundle on top of that. I think that this bundle I'm gonna try and get in from the top. There we go. And another little bundle on top of that. A little bit messy. There we go. Drop them down inside. And in a couple seconds time, they will work their way down and I'll start feeding in bigger ones. Right up to some splits of maple. All right, once I get the fire established and the pellets are going, I'm going to bring you back so that uh, you can see them in operation as I use a fry pan on the titanium one and a pot of water on the stainless steel one. Pellets are well engaged. I've already been able to put a few pieces of hardwood into the titanium stove. Let me get my pot of water on. So I'm using here is my uh, Pathfinder bush pot, which is a 14 centimeter pot. You can see it covers up most of the top of the stove, not the, the whole top of the stove. Uh, you know, still plenty of ventilation all the way around it, so it's not going to cause a problem with the wood pellets. I wonder what it will do if I put it on top of the wood. A little bit, you know, there's a little bit of smoke there, but not much at all. All right, but I intend that one for my water. But for my lunch, although the flames are still a little high, I think I can probably work with this. I know this looks like a really nice fry pan, doesn't it? Well, I paid $2.99 for it at our thrift store Value Village and just cleaned it up a little bit, gave it a little bit of a oil seasoning. Speaking of oil, a little bit of olive oil. Move that around. I do have a little carbon seal plan that I also picked up at Value Village that I like to use, but you know what? I like using this because of the shape of it. It's just a good shape for using, well, I feel it's a good shape for using on top of stoves. Now, I don't want to get everything too hot here, so I'm going to be 
moving back and forth to make sure I don't uh, scorch everything. And lunch today is some sauerkraut and corned beef. Now, how does that sound for exciting? Actually, it is quite tasty. I will fry that up a little bit. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. That is hot. They're too hot. Gloves on. And when it's got a little bit of a nice crispiness to it, then I'm going to throw an egg on top of it. The trick here is going to be not to let it get too hot. Give it a second to stew there while I get my spice kit out. And the pellets are roaring now. They take a little while to get going, but once they're going, they're good. A little bit of Old Bay. A little bit of herbs. Mixed herbs. I think that's all I'm going to need here. Yeah, that's good. All right, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just continue to work on my lunch. You don't want to necessarily watch me do this whole thing. I will give you some more views of the stoves in operation here so you get an idea of what kind of uh, flame patterns they produce and everything. And then I'll enjoy my lunch before we have a few more words to say about this. All right, another view, different angle, down low. And uh, I'm going to get my egg on top of my... Let me just show you what I've got for lunch here. So hopefully you can see this. This is my sauerkraut and corned beef. And on top of that, I'm just gonna crack an egg. Try to get it, keep it in the center. I'm gonna put that back on top of my stove. I think my fire is a little high right now, but uh, all right. And I take my dinner plate and cover it up. You can see the wood pellets on the right doing a good job. I think my water is just about come to a boil. And it won't take long for that egg to pouch up on top of those, uh, on top of the other stove there. These are fun stoves to work with. They really are. I will tell you though, they can go through wood. The airflow is that good. They can go through wood pretty quick. So if you're looking to slow the burn down, you're going to need some larger chunks of wood. Okay, what I'll do now is I'll just uh, cut away, finish off my lunch so I don't burn it, keep an eye on it, and uh, then we'll come back. So what are my final thoughts on the Bushcraft Essentials Bushbox XL? Well, really, they are the epitome of German engineering and precision. They, they just work so well together. They're so well designed. The way they fold up, the way they open up and, and come into place. Uh, you know, it's just a well-designed stove all around. Now, is there anything I can find fault with them? Well, if there is anything, it would be the airflow. It's almost too good. <laughs> you know, the, the, the bottom plate, the fire grate, is more holes than it is solid metal, and that allows for a lot of airflow through that stove. So what happens is, is you get a very hot, very fast burning f fire. But if you're looking for coals for grilling over, then that's a bit, a bit more of a challenge. Not impossible, it's just a little harder with all that airflow. You, you need to start with some bigger wood, bigger hardwood pieces, so that, that they will, uh, won't be consumed as quite as quickly.
Now, there is a workaround for that, and the workaround is simply this. In my other video, I recommend it. The first option or accessory you should consider buying is the universal grate. That universal grate allows you to do a number of things. As you saw in the stainless steel version today, I used it for wood pellets, but I've also used it for setting my Trangia alcohol stove on at just a, you know, a near perfect height when it's dropped into place. If you drop it all the way to the bottom of the stove, you can use more pellets deeper in the stove uh, because it needs that grate to do that. But you can also use it with wood that way, and because the holes are smaller and there's more metal to hole ratio in that plate, then you're going to slow down the combustion to a degree. You'll have coals for a longer period of time. So I would highly recommend when you buy this stove, before you even consider buying additional trivets, which are a great option, don't get me wrong, but I would personally purchase the universal grate to go with it first. And again, of course, it's also good for grilling on the very top. So we're, what's that? One, two, three, four uses for that device alone. Uh, now, what about titanium versus stainless steel? Well, I had my stainless steel for two years before I received the titanium one. I used it a lot. There was only one complaint, and you know what it is, the weight. It is a solid, solid stove, and with that solid construction comes a lot of weight. So, now, a lot of weight is relative. It's not an ultralight stove you're going to take on long hikes, but for a day hike, it's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, you know, it's it's not that much of a difference. But when you pick up the titanium at 40% lighter, then you appreciate what you can have for just a few dollars more. Okay, let's be realistic. It costs about 50% more to buy the titanium. Anything else that I would say, one over the other? Uh, the downside of titanium is its price, its upsize is, is its weight. The upside of the stainless steel is its price, the downside is its weight. It's up entirely up to you. Both stoves are very solid performers. Now, before I close this out, I know someone's going to ask, okay, Mark, that is the ultimate in German engineering. How does it compare against American engineering? Well, that's the topic for another video. All right, get out and explore. Take that path left traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.